This is the O Review Podcast. O Review. All right, welcome to another video. So, as you see, I have many different glasses on here, so I'm not going to cover just one. In fact, I've already covered a couple of these by themselves. What I'd rather do is take a look at 2019. Um, I don't know if I'll do this in the future, but I think it's worthwhile to take a look at what's come out over the last year and to see what sort of went on at this point in time. So I know a lot of people are sort of disappointed with Oakley's latest offerings, but I think there's a fair amount this year that was actually worthwhile. And there was a few things I didn't like, a few things I did like, but the fact that I picked up about seven different pairs this year, and these are all new for 2019, I think that speaks well for what actually was released this year. I got my little cheat sheet here. I'm going to take a look at what's going on. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, we got about 15 new models are released this year. And I got about half of them, which I don't think is too shabby. The biggest thing was the collection or series of glasses that were labeled under Iris. I won't spell that right now because I'll probably mess it up, but um, we actually found this term on the copyright database. Sometimes you can find upcoming models and upcoming trademarks that are pending for sometimes even years. And we were really wondering what that was. And it turns out it ended up being a collection of glasses that basically had this disc right here on the hinge. So there's a few different models that share this. Um, I have the cold fuse here, which is probably my favorite out of them. But there's also the crystal, and I believe there's also the apparition, and uh, as well as the deadbolt. And the deadbolt originally only came out as a prescription model, but then just recently, in the last latter, latter part of the year, they had a sunglass model that had genuine tints and things like that. It is rather expensive. It's up in the 300 range, so I haven't picked it up as of yet, but hopefully at some point I can take a look at that. Because I really liked how the stem was twisted and pulled, and I think it was uh, sort of an interesting design. But the cold fuse is the one that I did pick up. It is a wire. Um, it does have some Ometer orbitals, but then traditional C5 stems. And then there's that hollow gasket right in the middle of the temple, which gives all of the models in the Iris line sort of a similar look. So it's sort of a, you know similar to the latch and other models like that with the kind of aviator design, but not quite. Uh, but it is a very good lifestyle one, and I have enjoyed this for just, you know, non-rigorous activities. Uh, it's been a good, good daily wear and uh, I really like the style of it, you know, the tension bar and things like that. So um, that's been one of my more, uh, more favorite lifestyle pieces, but there have been a few active and sport models that have piqued my interest as well. So just the other day I went tubing and I wore the Forager for the first time. Um, I got most of these over the summer, but haven't had a chance to wear too many of them aside from the Mercenary, which is my other daily one. And a lot of these have some similar stylings where they have the icon and then sort of a parallelogram tilted roughened uh, icon area here, which is shared amongst a couple different models. So as you see, the Sutro has a very similar model as well. And um, a few other ones uh, also share that. In fact, the uh, Mercenary is another one. So Sutro is one I haven't worn outside as of yet. Um, it is a rather large frame and almost as comically big. However, I really liked how the Forager fit outside, especially with winter activities, situations where you need a larger lens, great coverage, and as well as a darker lens for outdoor and glare and things like that. So I imagine that the Sutro is probably gonna be very similar because it's even bigger. Uh, definitely is flashy, definitely is noticeable, and it even has a tribute to the original eye shade in the back there. So I'll probably wear these maybe the couple, um, next couple weeks or so just to run them through their paces, but I anticipate that these are going to be also another uh, nice one to wear as well. Going along the active ones, and it's, uh, I did do a video on this earlier, but we have the Eye Jacket Redux, which is sort of a, an homage to the original 1994 Eye Jacket with all of the modern bells and whistles, metallic icons, better O-matter, and... Uh, I don't like the fit as much. Um, I feel like it sort of sits away from your face a little bit more. It's not as flush. The angular designs sort of distract a little bit of it, especially in the nose bridge where it looks like someone just took a lump of clay and kind of pushed on it. I do like the originals better, but it was a sort of a decent release. 
So then touching upon a few of the models that I didn't pick up, uh, one of them was the Clifton, which was sort of like a glacier glasses. It had these huge binders that went around your eyes to sort of block out side light. They almost looked a lot like a, a spiritual successor to the Sub-Zero with the way the orbitals and the lens are shaped. Haven't picked up any of those yet, but I definitely want to have those on my list. And then there's also been the EV Radar Advancer, and I believe there's also an EV Zero Advancer. So last year we had the flight jacket and the field jacket, which had a tab in the nose area where if you pushed on it, it would push the glasses away from your face. It would release a lot of the humidity and moisture and then hopefully release a lot of the fogging. So with that, um, they've expanded that into the, the radar line and the EV zero line. So that advancer tab would then be on those models as well. Now also in addition to brand new models, there's been a lot of color refreshes and color collections. So we started the year off with the Snapback collection, and these were these very distinct mismatched colors, almost to the point where they were horribly clashing with each other. It was supposed to be reminiscent of the 90s, and uh, the way the colors clashed, they did a pretty good job with that. Not something I would normally wear, but you know, it's, uh, they were definitely interesting. So then we had the Ember collection and the Prismatic collection. The Ember collection just sort of had some warmer red tints to it, and then the Prismatic collection uh, weren't really prismatic as far as colors go, but they had a lot of wireframe art on the stem, so it was more just a, a frame decoration at that point. So then we actually had two urban collections. There was just the urban collection, and then there was the urban explorer collection. Uh, both were very bland. The urban explorer was more root beers and matte gray smokes, whereas the other urban one was just some very muted colors. Um, I guess for the theme of urban, it was more just, you know, subdued and very undistinguished colors. Um, again, not something that was terribly at my interest level, but, you know, they do have their place. And then just rounding out the regular colors, when we had the Journey collection, which had some... I'd say that we almost fit more into the Prismatic collection. There was sort of a little bit of sheen on the colors. It gave them a little bit of shine to it, a little bit of color shift. And then there was also the wood grain collection, which is, again, we've had this before. It was just wood grain themed glasses, just updated to the most recent models that have been released since the last time we did a wood grain collection. So there are a few more fade frames as well. We had the Slam Jam collection. We had the Spring Summer 2019 collection. And then we also had a round three of the Thermonuclear Protection collection. So some of those came out with the eye jacket. And then another one had the eye jacket redux as well as the wind jacket too. And then there was another one which had uh, an M2, which is, uh, you know, you haven't seen the M2 on too many different collections lately, but that was also included. And they were basically either top to bottom fades or side to side fades in some various configuration. And then finally, there was one called the Ignite Fade, which basically just had the tips of the uh, glasses with the fade as opposed to the entire thing. So again, very subdued, very, you know, not too flashy, just a few extra color collections to sort of go from the solid frame ones to something that was a little bit different. Uh, one of the frames collections that I did pick up was part of the metallic splatter collection. And these are cool because, you know, I do like the splatter. Um, they're more of just sort of paint fleckings as opposed to the, the real blotchy ones like we've had before. Uh, but I really liked it. And the nice thing about these is that in addition to the base frame, there were metallic splatters. So each of the ones that you see here, whether they're gold flecking, silver, or even like a darker one, they have a shine to them that really reflect well on the light. So I picked up the M2. Uh, there were many different colors, but this is the matte sand with sort of gold, silver, and black flecking. Really nice design. I think it complements the, the beige undertones with a lot of bold colors. Um, really looks like it's... Uh, and it really looks like sand. Like if you go to the beach and dig through the sand, you'll see a lot of different color pebbles. And I really think it matches that quite well. And then the big thing this year was the Galaxy Frog. Uh, I did a whole other video on this one. Got to see the creator, um, nice guy. And these things are really nice. To get me to buy another frog skin, it has to be really special. And this definitely fit the bill. So it has a hand-painted galaxy theme with stars and nebulas and quasars and pulsars and all that fun science stuff and it really really sort of piqued my interest and they were really nice so that kind of wraps up the year the the last thing i got of the year is this nice grip ornament which was only released in certain stores and since i have a rather extensive grip collection this one fits in nicely there so 
I think 2019 was a pretty good year. Um, definitely we've had worse, we've had better, but it really released a lot of different things. And the fact that I picked up so many models this year, I think it speaks to that we really had a good year this year. So I'm looking forward to 2020. There's already a couple uh, color collections that are coming down the pipe. Um, I believe we have the Year of the Rat Chinese New Year editions coming out shortly. And uh, I look forward to those. It's going to be a few different apparels, a few different frog skins. I believe there's also going to be a 35th anniversary frog skin coming out that is a return to the metal hinge. Um, as you remember, the very earliest frog skins way back in 85 had a metal hinge for a while until the Gen 2s came out and then it turned into more of the, the integrated hinge that the collectors had. The interesting thing was that on the originals there was two circles on the outside and that on these ones the hinge has a triangle and a pentagon. And triangle has three sides, pentagon has five sides. So 3-5, 35th anniversary. Very nice touch. Also a good way to keep it from looking like the original vintage so people won't just take new ones and pass them off as vintage. Um, there's a guy on the forum who uh, kind of found that idea, so I'm going to credit him. I don't remember who it is, and I apologize, but I will put your name on the screen just so you get full credit for spotting that nice little detail. So I do look forward to those and everything else that 2020 brings. All right, catch you later. Thanks.